Okay, so I'm gonna start my speech in five, four, three, two, one. What we're going to do in government bench of the house is that basically we're going to lower the voting age to mechanism. Firstly, we're going to lower it to the age of 16 or to the age of high school. Why? Because we consider that in that age, you already have certain degree of brain development to think better. Most likely the people in this age, mostly already having their own political stance and political opinion, they already have certain degree of, uh, you know, understanding of the how, how the politic works and the, we think that these people are already having a lot of information uh, and already have opinions upon it right and secondly we give we will give them a lot of socialization right we will give them you know expose them to more news expose them about the you know the information about the candidate of you know what is this candidate are represent into and uh, you know in the best case we can even penetrate it to the education system so we can give them more more uh more education more educations about the elections right so why would it, why we're not going to give this under the age of 16 right because you're still in conditions of a child we think that you all of your decisions are still considered and are under your parents control and aggregately you have less responsibility than the, the people in the age of 16 right so what i'm going to talk in my speech is i'm going to talk about the principle when will you give the people the right to uh, to vote we think that if you give people the rights, uh, the parameter of you giving the rights to people is three things. Firstly, is that the moment you give these people a certain degree of responsibility. And second, the moment they already are really, really affected by the policy that the government are taking. And thirdly, whether or not they have, you know, you have the capability of having sufficient level of rationality aggregately and uh, to making, you know, good voting decisions. So I'm going to, uh, prove why these three parameters is already fulfilled in the age of 16, right? Firstly, why we think that these people are already should be given the rights. We think that you give you have to give them rights because in the current status quo, these people are already having a lot of responsibility in their lives, right? These people are you know asked to follow rules of being a good citizens. For instance, they are asked and and even coerce to follow the rules for example an education systems that they cannot even have any rights to change it or even any having any voice of you know uh, uh, valid political points to actually you know have a say on the education system secondly you ask them to follow the rules of like you cannot drink and other things which at the end of the day if they broke the if, if they broke this kind of rules you will give them a lot of uh, you will put them in jail. So basically, you have you have given them certain degree of responsibility, and thus they should be given a certain degree a degree and validation to vote. So I think in the current status quo, you give them a lot of responsibility, but they don't even have any access of voicing out their political opinion in a in a valid way, which is voting, which is a valid way that can affecting the policy in the future, right? What are the policy? Two things, the policy in the current status quo, and the secondly is the future policy. Firstly, the policy now. We think that the, we think that the students are experiencing a lot of problems with the government policy, right? Their policy about student loans, their policy about women, for instance, their policy about, you know, all those world problems that we think these people are also uh, experiencing, ladies and gentlemen. So we think that these people should also have the voice in politics because they are at the end of the day will going to be the victim of the bad policy that the government say and they should have a say to prevent it at least to prevent it from happening by their votes secondly is the future policy we think that it, this these children or this uh, you know this uh, 16 people 16 years old people or uh, are going to be the, the future are going to you know ex um, uh, we are going to be the victim of all the future impact of the policy that are taken by the government now, right? Their, you know, their future about whether or not they will gain more access to job or whether or not they will live in a good environment is based on the policy of the government now. We think that the moment when these individuals actually are given this much of responsibility, they should also have this uh, rights to actually change the voting, to change the policy that the government have in current status quo. And secondly, the parameter of the uh, the essence of democracy. We think that 
democracy is not about bad decision, right? Because it's never been, uh, uh, democracy never been about rationality. Because if it's about rationality, then why don't, why don't you just make all the schoolers that, uh, that can only be uh, voted, gentlemen? Why you ask, for example, the people who are uneducated to vote in current status quo by merely their age, right? Because we think that democracy has never been about this, uh, this uh, rationality. The most important thing is that you grant them and you give them the rights and access to vote, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, I... because they are aggregately seen as someone who already have, you know, enough power and enough, you know, uh, uh, good decision making, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we think that this, this, uh, this people should be given the rights because in aggregately, in average, they already have some level and sufficient uh, by scientifically uh, uh, are able to make decision ladies and gentlemen. Just like how adult you give them because they, uh, because scientifically, they already, and aggregately, averagely, they already have sufficient level of rationality ladies and gentlemen. But secondly, why they are capable enough? I think these children and these people are actually someone who are already exposed to a lot of news, right? It is them who are exposed to a lot of social media, ladies and gentlemen. They are someone that are following the current trend that even the adult maybe cannot access. But secondly, I think they already have the basic knowledge, right? They learn history, they learn the essence of politics on PKN, for example, and they already practice democracy in class or they already practice democracy on choosing the, the student council leader, right? This is the practice, this is the, uh, the knowledge that they already have in that level of age, ladies and gentlemen. And secondly, I think many of them are even, you know, that progressive to the extent where uh, they already have political stance, right? See in the research shows that in United States, mostly this, this young people already uh, more into leaning into leftist policy, ladies and gentlemen. It is them also who have initiative to wear tote bag and other trends that are really, really good for the environment. And we think that some of them are even already have jobs, right? Some even already have internships and so on. And thirdly, I think that decision will, wouldn't be that arbitrary at the end of the day. Because let's be real, they, they, they hate Donald Trump too, right? We think that these people are, wouldn't that make that much of uh, irrationality on their voting religion. So the implication is that we will have more representations on these people who actually have rights. We will give them more we will give them political political power to the extent where uh, the political leader will make will see them as a voting blocks to the extent where they have moral duties to actually fulfill the civil rights at the end of the day. I'm proud to propose this motion. Yeah, hitung sendiri aja, Kak. Dopes, dopes. Ada jadi dopes kah?
Halo. 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 Oke. Okay. Mana ini Kak? Oh. Sorry guys. Tunggu tunggu tunggu. Ke timer aku. Oh, di bagian tuh tes tes. Sip sip sip. Sip. Oke. Satu dua. Mr. Madam Speaker, as opposition uh, as opposition side of the house, we're not going to debate whether or not democracy is for is for teenagers or not. We're going to debate like whether or not like with with the inclusion of teenagers to begin with, does democracy eventually will yield to better accountability or not? Um, uh, we, we're go we will explain that in two um, uh, in two. Um, arguments. First of all, we're going to explain to you like the principle voting to begin with, and why do we think that it it will be problematic to lower the age of voting to begin with. Second of all, we're going to explain to you why um, teenagers, especially like 16 years olds or or those in high school uh, age, are vulnerable to this to the lowering of this age to begin with. All of the um, of all of the battles of government side of the house will be integrated within my argument. So first of all, um, the principle of voting, um, Mr. Madam Speaker, we think like the, the the there are two reasons why why we get to grant voting to people to begin with. Number one, based on utility, and second of all, based on their uh, based on their need uh, based on their need to express their concerns. First of all, we think that vote, uh, voting, Mr. Madam Speaker, is about identifying what you need and how. Um, how through the identification you you demand government to uh, you demand government to fulfill that needs. We think that exactly through this accumulation of um, uh, accumulation of demands, uh, government are government is then able to construct their nation building through um, certain measures of policies. We think that policies, Mr. Madam Speaker, uh, we think that policies have a lot of um, have a lot of uh, variables to. Uh, uh, I have a lot of variables to assess to be uh, to begin with. In this case, we don't think that at the age of 16, for example, like these teenagers are able uh, are able to identify their needs and um, and contribute uh, to to those policies. Why is that so? Because we think that children at 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 uh, the at the age of high school, Mr. Um, Mr. Madam Speaker, they are occupied by, by their school by their school materials. That mean like by technicality and by mentality, yeah, right. they are unable to assess like how certain policies affect them, or like uh, or like to even uh, uh, like identify what they actually need from the states. Why is that so? Because we think that number one, um, yeah, right. other than their occupation of school, it is also like uh, their needs are not actually be met by by. Uh, are not actually be met directly by um, the state, but like their their uh, their parents actually serve as the extension of um, of the state care. That's like they don't directly uh, demand something from the government. They demand something um, um, right. from them uh, from their identification of needs. Uh, allows them to demand something from their parents. This is exactly why when the, uh, the government side of the house says that they that it is the responsibility of the students to. Uh, to identify or at least to contribute um, to changes in society, we think that that is uh, 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 we, we think that is something that is already negated by the by the current system, Mr. Madam Speaker, because um, like the inability for students to uh, to assess how certain policies affect them uh, is not being is not being met simply because like the simply because the responsibility of um, of being students uh, overshadows uh, uh, overshadow those abilities but second of all we think we think that exactly because of this occupation like don't even mind uh, students being being concerned about standard labor wage right. social protection and so on they will focus more on what they could achieve academically but second of all we think like the need to express their concerns mr Chairman and speaker we think like adults uh, we think that uh, adults to begin with are able to determine which issues that raise their concern, concern to begin with at this age we believe that they are um, at the age of 18 or 17 which is university age this is exactly why when uh, government side of the house says that they will that they want these teenagers to care about policies um, uh, policies is not necessarily exclusive because in our side of the house that these teenagers have to wait two years um, two years later to eventually um, 
to eventually be able to choose which policies that um, which policies that um, affect them. Why is that? Uh, why, why is it um, more? Why is it um, make a lot makes a lot more sense in our side of the house? First reason because we think that those uh, 16 years old and teenagers they're more vulnerable to their parental influence. That means a lot of their decisions will be basically. Um, will be uh, will basically based on what their parents approve. In comparison to the life of uh, the life of young adults of uh, eighteen or uh, eighteen or seventeen, they are more likely to be able to explore um, to to explore what they uh, their values and be engaged in political activism because they're say for example they're at uh, university age within this range. So even if like there is influence of their environment uh, to that affects their political choices, we think that it is by choice because. Uh, because it is something, uh, because it is the values that they are initially drawn to, but um, but uh, but second of all, we think that exactly because now they are adults and they are encouraged to take responsibility of themselves, they are more likely to think about, uh, they are more likely to, to care about policies because they want to think about what is it in the long run for uh, in the long run for me. Since when you are actually when you are at this age, you're you're more likely to be concerned about job opportunities, social protections, and so on. Thus, we think uh, on the basis of utility and um, and the need to raise concern, we think this will be more a shift in um, if, if without lowering the age. But second of all, why do we think like children are, for, are for vulnerable to this? This is when this is this argument will rebut uh, a government's uh, argument about rationality. First of all, we think that this is not necessarily about knowledge, Mr. Madam Speaker. This is about like experience. Thus, we think that we assume that. People have to go through certain, certain um, have to go through experience of political implications of certain policies in order for them to realize what politics uh, politics is. Why do we think that um, children uh, of 16 years old are not able to do that? First of all, we think that uh, the ability for uh, teenagers to think in the long term is not there to begin with. Thus, we think that um, teenage, teenagers are more likely to drawn into things that benefit them in the short uh, short run. In, of the long run due to their educational occupation they could not think of like values and interest differences because their homeworks are just more important that is why like imagine like a politician alumni coming into their schools and promising their facilities like that is something that gratify these teenagers and they will and they will more likely to be drawn into this the problem is that exactly because young people do not ask for much that's the, the ability for these politicians um, to be accountable is not is not there we think the harm is not only that uh, these teenagers uh, these teenagers will be short-sighted in, in in terms of political gains but it will also embolden like the fact that um the fact that young people uh, the narrative that young people are uh, indeed immature about politics but second of all like regarding like the 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 the, the uh, parental influence uh, parental influence that these teenagers uh, go, go through um, this is something that will be explained more by my second speaker as we're prepared to oppose hello kedengaran kalau begini kedengaran hello iya kedengaran Okay. Wait. Starting my speech in three, two, one. Two rebuttals. First, um, LO said that children does, don't ha have the ability to analyze their needs. This is wrong. Because first, they are. Uh, because they feel that they are obliged to follow certain things, even to the extent of sacrifice their money. If they have certain amount of money, then they should give a tax towards the state. Suddenly, it makes the children think and have the ability that they, this is something that is very, very affecting them. They are needs to follow all those possibilities and all those uh, rules created by state. Thus, they don't have any responsibility to give in. But even if they are completely clueless, it is also happened in their side. Democracy in their side, it is conceding people with uh, no education and no awareness of politics has the right to vote. It is the same condition when the people or children doesn't have the ability to analyze the politics, they still have the uh, uh, right, it should be have the right to vote. It is better in our side because in our side, at the very least, we give them chances and opportunity because they are affected by the issues because the parameter on whether or not you should give someone vote it is 
uh, which uh, site that is affected by the policies made by the government and the children is heavily impacted by this policy of the government. That, that is why they should have right to vote. But the second engagement, children uh, said by the opposition tend, tend to fight the short time fight. First, it is not true. They're also fighting for climate change. It is the fight for, um, it is, it is the fight for their time when they are ruling the government. I will explain to you later why this is important. But even if yes, they are fighting for short time fight, it is okay and it is a must because it is affecting them directly. We're talking about child trafficking. We're talking about taxation. We're talking about, um, we're talking about uh, student loans. We're talking about educational policies that is uh, very, very affected their lives. But uh, this is shows to you that it's important for them also to fight the short time fight even if uh, 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 and engaging to their case uh, about the characteristic of the children that they want to engage in the sort of fight. Yes, it is true. And yes, it is important. We are proud to uh, propose it. Here's the thing. Before I'm going to bring my argument, this is what my prime minister already proved to you. First, that it is unfair position. To, uh, there is an unfair position to youth where, where they have the responsibility and there's so much thing to follow and zero right participating in politics. It is, uh, my first figure already shows to you that it is the inability of the current government to give them chances and rights when the conditions is they are forced to follow certain rules when there are no power in changing that rules that is affecting them. It is the thing that my prime minister already proved to you. I will add by giving three extensions. First extension. Um, about uh, first extension about how there are so many issues that is left out by the adults and it is important to involve the children inside of politics. Second of all, about investment and regeneration. The third of all, why this proposal will be significant game changer in politics. First of all, why uh, this is the why in status quo there are so many issues that is left out by the adults. Dobbs uh, <clears throat> already told to you that adults know how to bring up discussion on what things were to fight for. Um, but in status quo, it is not. Iksan already said that there are things affected children such as, such as child trafficking and etc. As Deputy Prime Minister, I say that this happened because, because, of, uh, because these are particular issues left out by the current political sphere. In status quo, there are the, the issues focus in political sphere and political climate. It is only circulated among things that is considered hot. In Indonesia, we talk about religion. Uh, uh, in the US, we talk about Black Lives Matter. I'm, I'm not necessarily saying that those issues are not important, but if they are circulated heavily among the political climate, it is, uh, high, uh, it is highly possible that there's the issues of children, it is left out. The issues about student loan, the issues about child trafficking, the issues about sexual violence in regards to children, it is very, very left out because it is considered not as a, not an utility analysis and not a utility and not uh, uh, util, uh, not giving a significant utility to the society if you are uh, bring up these issues to the government. But moreover, in Satu School, the parties that claim that they are a youngster party, it is not going to directly discussing this particular Sorry, matter. I... What? No, thank you. What is the example? Uh, Solidarity Party of Indonesia claim that they are youngster people, but none of their policies talking about children's cases in terms of specifically wants to giving them chances or giving them interest to be, uh, to be catered to begin with. That is why it is important for you to add the issues that is left out by the adults by having them participate in politics because they have the chances to determine what is issues that is important. Comparatively, in their side, these issues have been silent and many children are being harmed. But second of all, investment and generation, regeneration. Government already considered youth as, as investment. We are considering this. Uh, it, it can be proved uh, by saying that the government uh, has subsidized so much for education and etc. What is the purpose of this? Because the children can contribute back to the society when they are become adults. They can contribute uh, as a uh, governor. They can contribute as the state uh, apparatus and etc. Why this is important? Because they should be make sure, they should make sure that in the moment when they are contributing back to the state and ruling the state, their particular state is in the very safe and comfortable conditions to begin with. That is why the, uh, that is why the check and balance system have, uh, have by, uh, done by the children is a very important thing to be given here. 
comparatively in their side, they don't have any measure to make sure that they have the ability to make sure that they have their future when they are in the position of power. It is going to be a better world to begin with. They don't have power until they are being in their particular chair, ladies and gentlemen. That is why it is very important thing to measure. Why this is very exclusive in their particular young age? Because voting is not done a single day on a single night. It is happening in five years, 10 years, four years, you name it. Once they are electing a wrong government and having a wrong policies, it is very, very harmful to begin with. Third argument, this proposal will be a significant game changer in politics. Here's, with, here's the thing. In status quo, we have massive amount of teenager, especially in the countries, uh, in the developing countries like Indonesia, India, China, and etc. Um, but the reason why uh, we should give them power uh, to, vote, to vote because we consider that this particular youngster is the, um, is the moment when we can shift the political discourse from, uh, from circulated by the elites only uh, onto the things that are very, very uh, different and giving the new nuances in politics. This is important because uh, be this is important because in status quo, we, we are already scrutinized, uh, we are already um, forced into up into the discourse that are created by the elites only. We want to this to become the new uh, discourse inside of politics. Thank you. Audible? Yeah. Okay. I will start my speech in three, two, one. One major crisis for this debate or to respond to what the governments are trying to say, uh, they're trying to give the argument about how we should give the independency towards the students for, for their voting rights. First, they say it can be, uh, it justify because we will give them socialization so they can be independent. Second, because they also have, um, uh, government also give them many responsibility and also they directly impacted from those regulations, then I will try to respond to their best case scenario. They try to say, they give the independency by socializations. Uh, uh, so they can also be uh, lit, uh, they also can be uh, influenced by uh, by the political discussion political discussion uh, political situation and also etc but i say that they never explain to us how it will work uh, uh, in a significant way ladies and gentlemen they say it will uh, because they had also tried to implement it in their classroom for example but we think that that's not the things that you need to uh, contributively uh, contribute in a political discourse you have to understand the dynamic what happened in the political discourse ladies and gentlemen they, they never Never get in their classroom in the current status quo. Second, in terms of the responsibility, government never tried to explain to us what exactly the exclusive uh, responsibility that only uh, that only uh, severe by them, for example, uh, and also what ex what exactly the exclusive impact that only felt by those underage. They give us the example, for example, the uh, for example this, uh, when they do stealing, for example, or uh, or do uh, such as uh, public uh, public. Uh, uh, chaos, for example, they will be in jail. But we say it is something that is not only burden to the still these children. This problem is still inclusive, ladies and gentlemen. Um, if the case is about the school law and, and also and, and etc etc, this still is an exclusive problem. Well, yeah, right. where uh, where the students in a tertiary education also feel how how uh, expensive the edu the tertiary edu education, for example, they never explain to us what the exclusivity. And I will explain to you yeah. why it is exclu uh, the exclu uh, why it's more exclusive in our side, government failed to stand their cases. Yes. Oh, if the burden, if the burden and responsibility is exclusive, then why don't you make the rights also exclusive to vote? I will explain inclusive, to I mean. you. What I will explain to you why, even if this to uh, this underage also have exclusive problem uh, for uh, uh, in terms of school loan, for example, why they will still be catered by the major, uh, by by the major for the selects, gentlemen. So first, why I will extend my uh, my leader of opposition's case in terms of utility and also the uh, how uh, uh, how the expressions uh, of these voters should be independent, ladies and gentlemen. So the uh, the contributiveness. We see that 
uh, or in terms of how people can contribute and giving the maximum utility, we, we have to make sure that those voters understand the dynamic of the political. They, direct, they directly see how the politicians uh, implement their regulation, for example. They have to understand what the goods and also what the failures that coming from those regulations. It is important because it to create the engagement in terms of the political discourse. Uh, why it only will be achieved by the major because they work uh, because they work in a working environment for example they have seen the, uh, and also directly involved on how the government implement the rule they have meeting even with the government official for example to determine how the country should direct their uh, regulation for example and also it is exclusive because uh, for example in a uh, in a young voters, for example, in 18 to uh, 20, uh, 20, 20, uh, 22 years old, for example, they've been college and also they've been independent because they most of them have already acted in organization they have been independent and also uh, most likely they have been le uh, left uh, separated from their parents for example it means that it gives them more independency on how they can rationalize their own uh, their own option ladies and gentlemen it is really important because uh, it is really important because uh, in comparative to the high school students they they are they're still not uh, educated about how uh, how uh, to build a state, for example, because we think that uh, what we learn, what we study in a, a tertiary education, for example, regarding about how to build a good state, for example, it is really complex, ladies and gentlemen. It is exclusive in our side because the um, uh, and because it takes very long time to be understood. It is uh, been exclusive only to the major because the amount of time of these majors spend for political discourse will never be as equal as uh, as what underage uh, as what underage does in the current status quo. So that is why we think that it will really uh, harm if we want to impose it because comparatively in a children is that they still uh, passively engage in that polit political discourse. For example, they are uh, they are not significant. significant a significant platform where they can create a proper political discourse for example uh, they're very limited we think that it is okay to limit their expression in terms of this political because they have also other responsibility to understand their knowledge and also to prepare for uh, to, to prepare well for their own future for example and also we think that it is also uh, will be harmed because uh, uh, these political um, issues is really uh, it, they can be influenced uh, very, uh, uh, they can heavily influenced by those political situations. So, going to my second, uh, so, uh, uh, before I'm going to my second argument, why they will be still catered, ladies and gentlemen, because there, since they're still students and also they're still, uh, they're also in current status for their uh, tertiary, uh, tertiary edu edu education students, means that what most likely uh, fight for, uh, what exactly uh, the, uh, this uh, lecture, uh, uh, what exactly uh, mahasiswa demand, for example, they, it also will be in line to the progressivity of the students itself. For example, in the terms of student one and also more effective student learning system, for example. So why it will be more harms? Because we think that uh, it it can uh, uh, it can give a polit uh, harm uh, for a political discourse will harm even more because how children will join or buy the political purpose they will only join the superior party why because this party have more influence and also to advertise and most children is really uh, ha easy to influence by those kinds of influence for example well, even if they're still mature for example yes that will be more irrational but we think that it is still uh, the, uh, the degree is not as harm as the children because at least this measure has still have the access uh, and capability to counterbalancing uh, of their circle for example because in comparative to the children's circle is a really uh, real li limited their circle also still uh, join and also con 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 uh, contained by children that also not really understand towards the cases so that is why we really uh, pro to, uh, to oppose this motion thank you Okay, timer. Oh, yeah. 
three clashes in my speech. First, I'm going to talk about the urgency and justification. Secondly, I'm going to talk about the accountability of 16-year-olds. And lastly, I'm going to talk about better representation and better dynamic of politics. Going to the first clash, right? Uh, let's talk about uh, the urgency and justifications. Notice that opposition side of the house, the only justifications only revolves around around whether or not these 16 year olds 16 year olds is really accountable is really experienced or not they never even proved to us why in their side why their side it's still in line with the democracy that that its purpose is to cater for all people regardless whether or not they are experienced whether or not they have they have uh, tokenistic positions in the parliament or not the descendant Kaikal and Kaikisan already brought so many justifications to the pay, to the table what did we tell you first we told you, right, 16 year, old, 16 year olds already have the equal burden, just like any other adults would have. Burden like responsibilities. 16 year olds still have to follow the rules. They are still be given pressure to stay in school, to keep up with their grades, and etc. Therefore, it becomes unfair when they have to handle the responsibility, handle all the pressure, but still not giving any rights or saying something that directly impacts and contributes towards their life. This is something that's ever been debated, by the way. But secondly, many 16 year olds, Many 16 year olds won't uh, pay tax on their earnings just, and, just as any other worker, adult workers would. In such school, there are 16 year olds that work their ass off to get earnings, for example, like working uh, children are working paid time jobs, child star, and etc. Therefore, it is unfair to have taxation without representation because other workers in general, they are allowed to vote to be given a representation to have a say on governments, like how the government spends their money, how much should money should be collected from taxes even these 16 year olds that work their ass off don't have the same privilege like any other workers have opposition might say that the amount of effort they put into is different than other workers like how adults might have more intensive work because they have different work time and span the pressure is different the job test is different the amount of the tax they pay is different the income is different etc they, they might say that they, they, they might say that giving them a representation the way adult workers have is not justified because the amount of effort is equal it's not equal this is true but however giving them rights to vote is the least government can do ladies and the, the least government can give back towards the minors yes the amount of effort they, they put into might be different but the amount of privilege adult workers have are so much more friends and so much more than just right to vote for example 20 year olds not cannot uh have the privilege not only they can vote but they can run for the office run for the campaign right this is some right this is this proves to you why even why the amount of privilege that adult workers have will will not be less uh will not be less superior uh, towards the minors if we give minors the right to vote ladies ladies and ladies and women. but secondly even if the amount of work is different but it's still proportionate anyway that's it's still fair even though this is true this should not be the case and the parameter of democracy is not about differentiating which one's effort is much more legitimate or more impact impactful but it's about acknowledging everyone's grievances because if, if oppositions want to say if that the valid parameter is about contributions and experience then lower class citizen that uh, that even adult lower class citizen in the house that doesn't have a job that have less income that minorities should not vote also in the side of the house because that effort is also lesser due to existing structural barriers right secondly we also told you the parameter right where, where anyone has the right to say something if it directly impacts and contributes towards their life on the present and the future for example 16 year olds are allowed to vote for politicians if these politicians policies directly impacts and contributes towards their life life in the future when they're also an adult at this month for example things like climate change and etc Opposition's only major point is to prove why this is not justifi justified, depends on their accountability. Therefore, on first clash, we win. Let's, go to, let's talk about the accountability. For, uh, first, uh, first battle, they say that 16 years old doesn't have the insight to understand pol the complex meaning of policies. I have two responses to this. First, policies are not that complex, right? It's not that too hard to understand because people in general can see whether or not the, pol the policy is good for the future just by looking at the purpose of the policies and they just can assess it whether or not this will be be this will benefit them in the future. Our kinds of information already exist in status quo where you can see a lot of media outlets give their two cents regarding policies that politicians promise if they get elected. But secondly, even if policy is that complex in, uh, complex in status quo, in even if opposition's side of the house, not all the majority of voting blocks actually understands and comprehend the policy when most of in people inside the school are already persuaded by the cult of personality of politicians inside the school. So even in the other house, not all those are technocrats when it comes to elections, when it comes to pol when it comes to politicians. Assessment. Second in battles, they said that Kadope said that 16 year olds are heavily, inf uh, be, uh, heavily influenced by their parents. I have three responses to this. 
I think God of uh, first, I think God of Peace is being dismissed to correct sense characterization on how accountable 16 year olds nowadays. This is a very sound right? We have told you so many characteristics on how 16 year olds nowadays are very savvy and already have their political senses. Secondly, 16 year olds nowadays are very like, like, less likely to adopt the same mindset with their parents. Why? Because there are externalities that they are influenced by their friend, influenced by SEOS, influenced by the progressive that are so millennials by nature. And how nowadays lots of teenagers have the incentive to give up with global issues because that's how most societies label someone if they really work or not at this moment. Adults in of itself have strict political stances, and if anything, they're only interested in politicians that campaign for populist policies like analytic politics, the leads, war warfare, ladies and gentlemen. In comparison to teenagers, they might want to vote for, fight, vote for politicians that are progressive, that uh, fights for climate, climate, climate change mitigation, and etc. But lastly, even if 16 year olds are heavily influenced by their parents, this is still accountable because, regardless it, if it's influenced by their parents, it is, it is still like it is still legitimate because it, it is the extension of their identi identity lesson. This is where Kaixan's argument is important where he told you 16 year olds where most of teenagers are ready or rational enough, already exposed to the, criti uh, to the critical thinking, already exposed by the subjects uh, of PKN history regarding uh, where, where uh, giving them uh, uh, enlightenment regarding elections, their country's history, the ideal ethics of law, politics, social justice, and etc. cetera, ladies, ladies and gentlemen. But second, but lastly, even if they're in outside the house, they are not that educated. We say to you, edu we, we say to you, we, we already say to you, it's not that exclusive in their side of the house anyway, because even majorities, not all uh, about technocrats and politi politicians, where they can easily be swayed by the cult of the personalities, ladies and ladies and gentlemen. Let's talk about better represent. Let's talk about better representation, right? We already told you, Kahikal ka ka already, already told you, the kind of representation that would exist if we allow minors to vote is going to be much, much more diverse and much more dynamic because there are lots of things like child trafficking, like child labor will be much more prioritized in status quo if you allow minors to vote, if you allow minors to have a say in, the, in their own governments, ladies, ladies and gentlemen. This is something that's really, really beneficial and never being responded by the opposition side house. Therefore, we're proud to propose. Am I audible? Yay. Yeah, yeah.
Haikal, Haikal. Oi, oi, oi. See the camera. Iya. Pasti. Wait, wait. Kapus dulu. Mungkin caranya ini. Ah. Oke, okay, oke. Okay. I'm going to talk, I'm going to start my speech in B. One. Eh, not in the one. Start my speech in three, two, one. I think the government side says that the principle of voting is A, B, C, but not explaining why it's likely to be so in the current status quo. Without explaining what are the reasons that we impose certain restrictions in the current status quo to certain people and why do we use that. I'm going to do that in my speech. I will reframe what are the reasons that we allow people have the right to vote. And secondly, I will explain what this will be impacted towards people that are actually the most vulnerable, which are the children that should not be included right now because they are not ready. Two clashes. One, when do we give the right to vote? Secondly, how this will harm the children. One, when do we give the right to vote? First of all, I think government try to reframe at Iksan's speech that the principle of voting must be total freedom no matter what weight and what is the outcome at that decision. I think this is problematic for two reasons. One, but because themselves, because team government themselves actually take the burden by explaining that teenagers are capable and teenagers are able to actually create the best decisions. So what do they want? Do they actually want the principle of you no matter what capable you are, you are able to be actually to vote or do you actually want to explain that they're able to actually vote to begin with because they are capable i think team government is totally unrealistic and totally unclear on what they want but secondly if the reason is that they are unable even if they are unable to be able to create best decisions they should be allowed then why not younger teenagers should be allowed also because most of all be even if teenagers that are actually 14 and 13 are not capable, why then are they not included in their parameter? So I think team government only pick several instances of principle which they think is actually fit the parameter of themselves, but not explaining the reasons why it's actually going to be like that. What then, ladies and gentlemen, the comparative and the principle of voting that we want in, in opposition side? We think that it's a balance of rights and when people are allowed to vote actually because of two reasons. First, it's because of utility and the best outcome of it. Why? Because in the current status quo, we so, see so much instances where we give people so much information that this is the things that you must know to actually vote in the current status quo. But secondly, we also know that there is a balance of rights. That's why in the current status quo, we still allow people who are less capable to vote because we understand there is so many mitigatory alternatives to actually make them to actually experience and un are, are able to actually understand several options that they need. But even if, ladies and gentlemen, we still think that even if that people are not knowledgeable in creating decisions, we think that at least they are able to create decisions based on their freedom to do so, not based on certain imposition that other people make and certain imposition that people force upon these individuals. We can see that maybe other adults are still imposed even if they are being adult. But the comparative is children are much more prone and more, more, much more vulnerable to be influenced in the current status quo. This debate, of course, that will be outliers. Of course, in their side, there will be children that are actually incapable. In our side, there will be adults that is actually incapable. But the comparative is which side have more ability to actually be more accountable for and actually creating the best decisions, in which we think that children have less of an ability to engage in so many platforms that we think are important for people to engage in best decisions. Thus, we think that that's the comparative in this debate. 
That's why in the status quo, we still allow people to vote even in the worst case scenario. What did government explain to other principles that I don't think fit in my clashes? First, they say that they must be affected by the policies in order for them to actually create better ability to express opinions for that policy, e.g. policies about children. I think this is very mitigatory. In the current status quo, most of these kinds of interests have been represented and overlapped with other people's interests, such as the parents, because they don't want their children to be harmed, such as these kinds of state, because they want these kinds of students to actually grow and in the future able to contribute towards the systems in the current status quo. That's why student loans, even if it's not being engaged by the children, it's still being discussed in politics because it's important for them to create regeneration. This also happens for sexual harassment because parents don't want their children to be attacked by ugly men or creepy men. So I don't think this is any urgency in current status quo because there is so much overlap, people are already represented. But secondly, they say that they have the responsibility and they are given no right. I think this is very ludicrous. In the current status quo, there are so many people in the current status quo that do not vote and are able, given the ability to do so, but they are still responsible, such as mentally ill individuals and younger people. In California, mentally ill people are unable to vote because they are seen as someone that is actually unable to communicate their expression. Why this is harmful? Because I think, ladies and gentlemen, using their principle, these kinds of individuals are still going to be actually allowed because these individuals have the responsibility to actually follow the rules. So I don't think this principle is actually going to be that important because to begin with, we did not, we did not use this at all in how to create these kinds of options and they have to must prove to you why these people are actually not fit in that. Why are they less capable? I think Dope has proven to you why politics are very complex. You need to analyze funding traits of party lines. This is harmful because children are hard to learn about this. Their studies are hard enough. The difference is in our house, when they are already in college, there is a large increase of how things are teach and how they study, especially in Indonesia, where first years in university are teach so many things about Indonesian political systems, how they are being more independent and create this kinds of educational system based on their own free will. Even if there, there, there are less knowledgeable individuals in our side, such as adults, that are actually still stupid, at least the experience in our side are much better. Because these adults already endure so many things in their life that it's able to shape their ability to actually get this kinds of vote that is actually credible. Such as in the current status quo, most middle income people and most people who are actually at poverty line are still able to vote because they've already experienced so many things in their life. Such as they already experienced the bad policy coming from the government, they already experienced the good policies coming from the government. So I think even if these individuals are not knowledgeable, at least they have so much experience in comparative towards the young people. Government respond towards this in two ways. First, children are already aware, they have already expressed political engagement. I'm going to concede this. Yes, there are children that are actually already SJWA, but this is our only outliers. The numbers are very small. These children are able to do this because they are the most privileged and raised in progressive households that, that can make them engage with this. The vast majority of children are still monitored. They still prioritize happiness on their relationship. They still focus on their studies. So most of the time, people are actually engaging their side are only small in numbers, but not going to represent the whole children that exist in the current status quo. But secondly, they, they try to respond by saying that there is mechanism to promote it through socialization. Two responses. First, children won't engage with it. This is boring. Why do they want, they want to undergo this kind of socialization? But secondly, even if the socialization succeed, I think it's not going to be able to be effective in the long run. Why? Because it's going to be contingent upon how it gains traction and in comparative right on current status quo, there are so many other things that are important in current status quo. Secondly, we see that they're being going to be controlled by their parents, especially high school students are being controlled by their parents and they are still stuck in their inner circle. In comparative in our side, when they go to college, you have three things that are going to be unique to experience. First, they have more, much more freedom to actually shape their education because they undergo their own careers. But second, they engage in so many organizations that is actually able to engage in their critical thinking. Lastly, they're not going to be controlled by their parents anymore because the current narrative is when parents are going to let you into college, they have less of an ability to actually control your life. The last comparative is very important because even if they are not knowledgeable, at least in our side, they are more independent to create the decision based on their own free will rather than other people. So even if in our side we take their principle, at least in our side, they are going to make better decisions. And lastly, the argument coming from Farid explaining why they will be going to be harmed even more because they are going to be the target of the political parties have no response at all by DAFA. They only say that it's going to be responded by Iksan and Haikal, but no actually no preemption at all. So I think in conclusion, opposition are the only thing to explain to you first, what are the prerequisites to create a voting and we already negate all of the principles and secondly, we create the principle of free movement and free independent will in order to vote in which no actually response is coming from government and lastly, our argument talking about in we are going to harm the people who are the most vulnerable, the children, which they have to focus on other things that are important for themselves. That's why we are proud to oppose. Thank you. Stop record. <laughs>